Thank you again. I now invite Lisa Hardwick, wife of Bradley Hardwick, to make this year's family address. I'd like to begin by thanking the committee for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. Every year you coordinate this beautiful ceremony of remembrance to honour our loved ones. We are truly grateful to have this space and time to do this. Thank you for everyone in attendance this evening and being brave enough to share in our collective grief on our journey of healing. I'd like to begin by sharing a little about the man who lived by my side for nearly 20 years and who was taken from this earth suddenly on 20th of Feb 2019. My husband, Bradley Hardwick, was a lovable jokester who was always up for a chat. He loved tinkering with cars and motorbikes and had a lifelong dream to do up an old EH. Brad made friends wherever he went and enjoyed making people smile and laugh. He loved us unconditionally and was so proud of our two children, Bella and Cooper. Brad enjoyed teaching them things and just spending quality time with them. He loved taking the kids for motorbike rides, helping them build wor worlds in Minecraft and enjoyed watching movies together. Brad was always up for an adventure and loved going on trips away and just generally exploring. Many family holidays were car trips up and down the coast. Brad loved to be creative and was always designing and building something, whether it was a lamp out of an old bike chain or an outdoor deck. His brain was always working. He loved nature and being outdoors, especially working in the garden and on our block of land at Conway. He was a protector of anything big or small and I remember him saving a small bird covered in green ants on a family trip. He had a real appreciation for the natural environment and the animals that reside there. Brad was a fierce protector of all of us, both family and friends. He always stood up for what he believed was right and always spoke his truth. He worked so hard and was meticulous with anything he did whether it was painting a car, grading the roads at work, gardening or building a new project. He took pride in the things he did and taught these values to our children and myself. Brad was my number one supporter and was always there to encourage me and get me through the tough times. He taught me so much, not just about the world, but about myself. I was truly blessed to have him in my life and be loved by him. Life as I knew it changed in the blink of an eye on 20th of February 2019 when I lost my soulmate Brad Hardwick. I'll never forget the three figures standing in my doorway having the awful job of telling me that Brad was gone. I did not even comprehend the word fatal and believed he'd been injured and would be okay. I was already in denial. It can't be true. The shock and devastation gripped my body in disbelief and then the onset of pain. Heartache so intense I couldn't breathe. How was I going to tell everybody that Brad was gone forever, especially the kids? How do you find the right words to say dad's not coming home ever? This is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Even though I'd been told he was gone, there was a feeling that he might just walk through the door again and that this was all a mistake. That night, nothing could soothe the ache in my heart as I lay under the full moon sobbing and not able to sleep. The movie reel of the accident playing over and over in my head. The shock and the trauma grappling my body and mine. It's a constant that never goes away and it changes everything. 
One moment you think your life is going down one path and in the blink of an eye it is heading in a completely different direction. The one you didn't choose, filled with pain, lost dreams, confusion and disconnection to the world that was. I've never known grief until I lost Brad. I felt like my heart would break into a million pieces over and over again. So many times I have feared dying myself. I cry when songs come on the radio. I cry at weddings because it reminds me of what I've lost and that Brad will not be a part of our children's weddings in the future. I scream cry in the car when I'm alone. The anger and the whys consuming my thoughts. Brad's absence is felt so deeply every day. The shock that he is gone never fades and is always there. Each day often reveals a new pain or the resurfacing of the pain and trauma of his death and absence. Now that the children are getting older, they're able to articulate the hurt of not having him around. There is nothing worse than seeing their pain and not being able to fix it. We talk about Brad every day and what he might say or do if he was still here. We speak of the stories from our past and I'm grateful that the children were old enough to remember their dad and his love for them. Since that day, we have lived in survival mode, taking each day as it comes, literally one step at a time. In the beginning, I couldn't even look at a photo or a piece of furniture without crying. Everything reminded me of him and what we've lost. We've lost our future together, our dreams. We now look at photos and reminisce about happier times. In the end, they're all we have left along with the memories. Every time we discover yet another life is lost in a mining accident, we're heartbroken <laughs> yet again for another family their friends, a community and colleagues while also grieving our own loss again as all the memories come flooding back. Since Brad's death in February 2019, there have been seven more deaths in the mining industry. My mind cannot even comprehend this information. It's so heartbreaking, the ripple effect that this loss has on families, friends, workplaces and communities. Navigating this life without Brad has been a constant chaos of challenges. It has proved difficult to move forward while still going through the legal processes of Brad's accident. We're approaching the four year mark in February next year and as a family would like to see some closure. These have been the most painful and stressful times of my life and has not been made easy with the events that have followed his death. This is something I wrote exactly one year ago when I was not coping with the world at all. Grief is hard. Grief is real. Grief is raw. Grief doesn't go away ever. Grief makes it hard to live everyday moments. Grief breaks the heart into a million little pieces over and over. Grief is pain. Grief cannot be fixed. Grief hurts so much that you feel you could physically break. Grief makes us appreciate the very small things and the big things. Grief opens our eyes. Grief makes us feel more deeply and believe beyond what the eyes can see. Grief makes us question life and why it's taking us on this path. Grief makes us understand why we loved so deeply. I'd now like to share some things that have helped support us on this journey in the hope that if you are struggling, you may seek help. Through all the pain that we've experienced, we've found many things and people to support us in coping with grief. Some of the most profound resources have been float tank therapy, water therapy and equine therapy. Accessing professional health services has been vital to our own mental and physical health. And I strongly encourage you to seek help if you are struggling yourself. I practice a lot of self-care through meditation, yoga, Pilates, 
swimming and attending support groups. Through these activities, I've met some of the most amazing people who have nurtured us. The most important thing that it has been acknowledging my own feelings, all of them, and not hiding them away. Speaking about Brad and celebrating the memories together has been one of my favourite things to do and is keeping his memory alive for us all. Remembering what a kind-hearted soul Brad was and how he was always uplifting people's spirits, especially mine, has made me realise what a significant impact he has left on this world. Losing Brad has made me question what my own legacy to this world is. What will I be remembered for? What choices am I making and what have I done for others? What is the extent of my own footprint on this world? Some of the lessons I've learnt through the loss of Brad that I'd like to impart with you are the importance of self-care. You can't pour from an empty cup, so you need to find the things that help support your well-being in order to support others. Have those tough conversations with your loved ones about what if something happens to me. When your loved one is gone, they have no voice to convey the messages and ideas. You just have to go with your gut and do what you think is right. But at the time, they're all tremendously difficult decisions to make on your own. Get some family photos done. They don't need to be professional ones. Even the self-timer ones are fun to take. I often look back at photos and videos and remember the good times. But seriously, ask yourself, when was the last time we were all in that photo? Support networks are extremely important to help guide you through the healing journey, whether that be health professionals, catch up with friends, family visits or support groups. Find those that match your values and lift you up and continue to lean on them and, and ask for help. We aren't here to do it all alone. We just need to be brave enough to ask for support. I'd like to thank you for hearing my story this evening. My hope for sharing is that we can heal together and find some comfort in the fact that we are not alone on this journey. My boy once told me that Brad lives on in our hearts, as do all of our lost loved ones. I thank Brad for loving me so deeply and giving me my two shining stars, Bella and Cooper, who help guide my way each and every day. Let's remember yesterday, give thanks for today, and have hope for tomorrow. Thank you.